Three important things happened to my YouTube channel this weekend. Number one, I reached 500 subscribers. So for this, I'm really grateful. Thank you if you are a viewer or a subscriber. Thank you for everything. Because knowing that there are 250 people at least watching my videos every day, this is something I would not have thought of a few years ago. So thank you once again. Number two is that this weekend I did not post any video. And there is a good reason for this. And it's mainly because of the third thing that happened this weekend. There is one of my videos which reached 1000 views in less than two weeks. The video which I made about Michael Burry saying that there is a bubble in the ETF in the index fund market. After filming my video on Saturday, I started asking myself the question, why this video gained so much pop popularity in such a short period of time? Because there are only a few videos which actually got more than 1000 views and it took these videos mo more than a few months my most popular video is the one I made about the Bank of New York Mellon and it only gained pop popularity when the stock price of Bank of New York Mellon started crashing and people started looking for this video and I was the only person who made an analysis of this that's why YouTube promoted the video and another video uh, which is very popular the one I made about the Munich Reinsurance Group. So these are videos which are popular because I'm the only person who analyzed those companies and made videos about them. But now the video I made about Michael Berry, what's so important about it that YouTube decided to promote the video? Actually, it's because people have been looking for this term, Michael Berry ETF bubble, index fund bubble lately. If you look on Google Trends, you will see that Michael Burry People have been looking for this a lot lately. So YouTube saw my video and decided to share it. But it's not the only reason. It's also because the quality of the video itself was higher than usual. I made a video of more than 10 minutes. I did a lot of research to make that video. And for this reason, many people have been watching the video. They have been watching it for much longer than usual. And people have been clicking more on the video and YouTube decided to promote more and more this video. Logically, of course, I would want all my videos to be like this. I would want all my videos to be of the same high quality, the same length, more than 10 minutes, because YouTube likes videos which are more than 10 minutes, and the same amount of research, the same amount of time that I made into that one video, I want to do that with all my other videos. But doing the same job on seven videos a week is very difficult. And for me, working on this alone is very difficult. I don't like video editing at all. And for the time being, I can't see myself delegating that job to someone else. I need to do the editing myself because of the things that I'm talking about, it's better I do this myself. And I'm not making money from YouTube yet. So I don't want to invest into delegation for editing for the time being. For all these reasons, I decided to choose quality over quantity. Why did I choose quantity then? one year ago when I decided to make one video a week. The number one reason is because I was not comfortable in front of the camera. If you look at my older videos, you will see how uncomfortable I was in, in front of the camera. I was shouting, speaking uh, rapidly. I was, I, I didn't even know what, what to say next. I, I was forgetting my words. I had to cut, every, you will see every five seconds I was cutting and, and it, it was a disaster. So I was making more and more videos to get better because practice makes perfect and the quality increased over time. But now I've reached a point where I think I don't need to make more videos every day to increase my, my quality, my delivery. I've recently joined a Toastmasters club, so I'm practicing more about public speaking. There is a book I'm reading by Lewis Copenhagen called The World's Great Speeches. Every day I'm putting a pen in my mouth and practicing my articulation, my delivery. So all these things are making my YouTube videos better. So I don't see my having the need to make one video every day anymore. Because some of these videos actually I myself, I don't see myself watching this video. So why would anyone want to watch the video? If you look at my video about Pioneer Energy, Pioneer Resources, why would anyone watch this video? It got only 30 views in 90 days, in more than 90 days. It's because it's not an interesting company. I just analyzed the company, yes, and I made a video about this. I don't need to make a video about each company that I'm analyzing. Only interesting companies where most probably I'm going to invest or there is something happening very interesting about the company. If you look at my video about Cymarx Energy, I made that video. It's, it, it, 
about 3 minutes long. Nobody wants to watch a 3 minute video about Cymerix and LG. It would have been better if I made one whole video, let's say 15 minutes, just about uh, the main players in the Permian Basin. And this would have included Pioneer Resources and Cymerix Energy and other players instead of making one video for each. This is what I'm going to do now. Instead of making seven videos a week, I'm going to make at least three videos a week. So I'm thinking of making a video on Monday, on Wednesday and on Friday. So three videos every, every week about the same thing about the stock market, but it will be more intense, more research. I won't be making videos about stock analysis, about random companies. I'm going to make only about interesting companies. And uh, also, it will be longer. I won't be making videos which are less than 10 minutes anymore. When I'm talking about longer, I don't mean I'm going to make 25 minutes videos. Nobody watches this. It's going to be around 10 to 12 minutes. So this is what I'm focusing on. And it's also what YouTube wants. If you want YouTube to, fo to promote your video, you should give YouTube what they want. Because YouTube, it's a company Google, they want to make money. And how are they going to make money? By putting more eyes on the video. What YouTube really wants is watch time. They don't want your eyes to be on, the, on your TV. They don't want your eyes to be on playing video games on Netflix. They want your eyes to be on YouTube. So give YouTube what they want and they will promote your video. So they want engagement. They want watch time. So to have more engagement, you have to make an interesting video, a well-researched video. And to have more watch time, of course, well research, interesting, and not too small video. It should be at around 10 minutes. One example I can give you is I wanted to make videos about the main companies in the cigarette industry. So let's say I want I wanted to make a video about Philip Morris, about Altria, about uh, British American Tobacco. It's useless for me to make a video about each one of them. I could make only one video, the cigarette industry. I analyze these three companies and if they, they, there's any other company I could analyze. So the main players of the cigarette industry, I can make a, comp a comparison between each one of them and tell you what I like about each one and what I don't like. This is what will make a better video rather than just analyzing Philip Morris Altria separately. Now, if I see that Altria, let's say for example, is a better investment than Philip Morris and I want to invest in Altria, then I can make a separate video just more focused about Altria. Then I don't have to talk about uh, what I already talked in the first video. This, this is where I want to go. Another reason why I want to do this is because of scarcity. If I'm putting a video every day, people get bored to see the same thing every day. I know when, when I'm filming, that's why I change the locations. Right now I'm filming here. Sometimes you will see I'm filming somewhere else. I always change the location because people get bored. In the past, I used to film in front of a white uh, wall. It, it did not work so well. And if you look at the videos which I'm filming when I'm walking on the beach or things, it's more popular actually. There's more engagement in such videos. The watch time on these videos is higher than average. So people want something different every time. And when you're making only three videos per week, it's more scarce. And instead of making one video, people will get bored because sometimes I, even I get bored. There are channels which I like and I see one video every day, I don't want to click. But once you see a video, let's say every two days, then you are more interested into clicking. And one example I can give you is the last video I post, the one about Goldman Sachs. If you see that after one day, YouTube started promoting the video, the number of views started increasing more than, than usual, the number of uh, watch time started increasing more than usual. So it's only a hypothesis. I don't know. For only one video, I cannot make a conclusion on this, but I think that YouTube promoted my, my video because I did not post anything else. So usually after one day, YouTube stops post promoting the video because there is a new video available, but now they keep promoting the same video because there's nothing else. You know, if I'm doing the right thing, I think it's important to look at my competitors, other YouTube channels in the niche that I am in, that is making videos about the stock market. The number one channel is Financial Education by Jeremy. Jeremy makes one video every day. He actually has two channels and on some days he will make, a, he will make three videos per day. So he makes a lot of videos. And uh, maybe you would think that I want to do that, but actually the target audience that he, that he has and the one that I have sounds the same. He makes the videos more about news. 
He makes videos about uh, popular companies such as Tesla. Many of his videos are actually just about Tesla. He makes a video about Tesla every week. I, I don't mind about that. This is his strategy. I don't say that it's wrong or it's right, but this is not my strategy. I don't want to be a news channel. And you will see his videos is about uh, Facebook, about those popular companies. I don't want to talk about those company, uh, popular companies. I want to talk more about companies which are interesting, which where I find value, where I think there is a need to look further. There is a need for investment or something interesting happening. The second most popular channel in the industry is uh, Phil Towns. So he has around 270,000 subscribers. He's more generalist. He posts one video every week and it's more general. It's not focused about investing in looking at that particular company or that particular industry. It's more about investing in the stock market in general. So it's more generalist. It, it, it's somewhere I don't want to go because it's something that I think this is for beginners in the stock market. While my channel is not really just for beginners. It's more for intermediate and advanced people. This is the target I'm looking for. And the best channel on YouTube about investing, in my opinion, is Sven Carlin. This is the channel channel I watch every video the only channel about investing I watch every video what I like about his video is that it is well researched so he if he is analyzing a company or a sector he gives you the information that you need this is what I like and I think this is the target audience where I'm looking at but he already has his audience I don't have my audience so I need to build an audience so for this reason I will have to do some videos related to news it's because I need to build that audience first. When I'm talking about making videos about news, I don't mean that I will make a video about Tesla every day. I mean, if something big happens, let's say Apple release a new iPhone, I make a video about this. If let's say oil prices rises by 10% in a single day, I can make a video about this. If let's say Apple makes a time machine, I will make a video about this. What do they want? Time travel? <laughs> what do you have to do? Hey, time travel sounds kind of cool. Right? I mean, that's what so this is what I mean by newsworthy videos. I said at least three videos per day. It can be more. It can be four. It can be five. It can be seven. It depends. But at least three. And I don't want now to tell you that I'm going to make seven videos a, a week again. It's not going to happen. So it will be around three. Let's say on average, I'm going to make 3.5 videos a week. Now, for those of you who watch my videos every day, I know that you won't like it that I'm making less videos. So it's not a bad thing, actually. I will still be active. If you are on eToro, I will be active every day there because I usually post something about what's happening in the market every day. I will still post this and also I have my Facebook group. I will still put the things there happening. I post multiple, multiple times a day. I still have my Instagram where I post multiple times a day about the stock market and I make short videos on Instagram stories. You will find, you still find me there. And also I want to write articles on Seeking Alpha. So let's say that video I made about Cymerix Energy. I'm not saying that the company is not interesting. It is interesting actually, but it's not interesting for YouTube. But it can be interesting for Seeking Alpha because Seeking Alpha is more advanced. This is where big investors want to look for information. And there you can write articles about such companies. That if I want to, I see a company which is very interesting, but it's not worthy of YouTube because I know if I make a YouTube video, nobody is going to watch it. Then I will write an article on Seeking Alpha about this. I tried to post two articles on Seeking Alpha, both were rejected. And I know the reasons why they were rejected. And I'm still working on improving myself to write articles on Seeking Alpha. So don't expect any article soon, but in the coming weeks, it will. my first article hopefully will be out. Earlier this year, I also talked to you about making courses, about investing, about making having a research platform where I show you all my research that I'm doing, talking more about you, about uh, those companies which I'm analyzing, and also about writing a book about investing. All these things are not going to happen this year. And uh, the research platform, it can happen. I, I don't confirm anything, but it can happen. The reason why I don't want to write a, make a course about investing, and there's so many courses now, there are hundreds of courses about stock investing. And I don't want mine to be just some beginner's course. I want it to be a little more advanced. So that's the reason why I'm not making it. And for this, for me to be able to make a more, a more advanced course, I need an audience first. So I still need to build that audience on YouTube and other platforms. Now talking about the book. 
the same thing about the book. I don't want to write to make a course for three thousand US dollars for this course and then give everyone a free ebook. I don't want to do this. I don't want to make a free ebook. I want to write a book about investing which is very advanced. That doesn't mean that a beginner cannot read it. I want it to be for beginners and also a little advanced. It's not going to be like the intelligent investor of Benjamin Graham. It will be more about security analysis of Benjamin Graham or the book that Ray Dalio recently wrote about the uh, big debt crisis. All uh, uh, those types of information, I want to put that into a book. And of course, it demands a lot of work. And for the time being, I don't see myself ready to make such a big work. Because I, like I told you, I don't want to make j just a, a random ebook that everybody is making. Because now you can see hundreds of ebooks about investing available. Some of them are even for free. I don't want to do this. I want a big good work like Seth Grauman's book, for example. Last year, I told you that we are living in the age of extreme fame leverage. This term was coined by Forbes when they wrote that article about uh, Kylie Jenner. So what they mean by this is that we are living in an era where we need to leverage social media, all these other platforms. So it's important for me to continue to leverage YouTube, but not just YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Seeking Alpha, even my website. I need to leverage each one of them. And each one of them is different. Each one of them are targeting different people. If you look at my Instagram posts about investing, my Instagram stories, it's more, it's less advanced. It's mostly for beginners. When someone just for the first time, they are aware of in stock investing. This is those people who I want to target on Instagram. Instead, uh, on my Facebook group, it's a little more about daily news, what's happening. On YouTube, it's mostly research. On Seeking Alpha, it's more advanced research. To conclude, let's say, as from now, I'm going to make three videos at least per week. At least three videos per week. If there is anything important, I will make a video. Tomorrow, most probably, there's going to be a video about What's happening with oil prices because this is important this is important i have free i have two companies in the oil industry it's important for me to make a video about that and it's it's not just oil there it includes defense stocks airlines all the things are related it's important for me to make a video about that now i need your opinion of course if you have watched all these this video i need your opinion it's an experiment which i'm doing maybe it will not work maybe after two months i will decide to keep making seven videos a, a week Maybe after two months, I may decide that it's better to make just one video a week. So I need your opinion. So please, in the comments, leave your opinion. What do you think about that? How can I improve my YouTube channel or any other platforms which I'm using? So thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and share if you have not subscribed yet. If you subscribe, you're the 501st subscriber. Watch these two videos here if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.